So why do we even care about AC? Why not DC? I mean, DC is easy. We set a voltage. Uh, chemical reactions will make a voltage, a steady voltage. So why, why would it even bother about AC in the first place? Because it's obviously going to be more complicated because if you've got, you know, voltage versus time and it's doing that sort of thing, that's clearly going to be more complicated to do, deal with than something steady. So why do we bother with AC? Well, first of all, it's the way you make electricity. Yes, chemical reactions can make electricity. That's how batteries do it. But that's only one way of doing it. We, in class, we've talked about Faraday's law and about Lenz's law and so forth. In the lab that we did, we did that as well. So if you have a coil and a magnetic field going through here, the coil, as the magnetic field goes through here, you get flux. As you twist the coil, then you don't have magnetic field going through there. Flux goes to zero. Uh, change in flux induces a voltage. You keep turning it, now you're increasing the flux in there. Change in voltage. You keep turning it, decrease in, in, in but decrease in the other, you know, decrease, but it's twisted so it's in the other direction, and then it's increasing but in the other direction. So that means you have voltage one way, voltage other way, and it's constantly changing as you're spinning the coil. So so how do you do that? Well, you burn something. You burn coal. You burn wood. You burn oil. Uh, burn natural gas. Boil water. Steam drives turbines which spin coils in magnetic fields make electricity. This is how coal, oil, gas, power plants make electricity. Uh, you can also do this by, uh, uh, likewise, nuclear energy. Uh, nuclear f fission reactions, releasing heat. Uh, that heat boils water, drives steam turbines, coils, magnetic fields, make electricity. Wind. Wind drives the big blades here, the wind turbines. They're, they got gears to connect to coil, spin them in, in, make magnetic, in a magnetic field, make electricity. Even the alternator in your car, you got magnets, you spin coils in there, make electricity. So this is how you do it. Now, in your car, you want to convert that into DC to charge the battery. So you do that with diodes. Diodes are like one-way valves for electricity. But it's not really a steady DC. It, it varies a little bit. And, and you can actually pick that up, you know, if you've got an older car with a, a lower-end uh, radio in it. It can actually hear that, 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 that static or, or a little bit of sound from the engine going. And then the, 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 the slight fluctuations that you have in, in, the, uh, in the voltage. So that's, 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 but that's, that's, that's a small thing. Other things need DC you know, more, but why, why, why AC? It's easy to make. And then the question is, why do you really need to change it in the first place? You know, incandescent light bulbs, the old incandescent light bulbs, uh, 60 times a second, you know, it's changing because that's the standard we've picked. You know, you don't want to go too slow. You want, don't want to go too fast, 60 times a second. Okay, so that's our standard right there. And so this standard helps us, you know, you know it's all the same all over the country. That helps us to ma maintain, you know, equipment. So the nice thing about this, though, is that, with the D, with the AC and, and and like this, that means it's 60 times a second this way, 60 times a second that way. So in a resistor like an incandescent light bulb, 120 times a second. Your eye can't see things that change that fast. You can see about a twentieth of a second. That's how long it takes the chemicals in your eye to re regenerate to see light again. So light comes in, triggers a uh, chemical reaction. Now you see things. Now, but the so. It doesn't really matter. Now, there were arguments at the very early on about AC versus DC, and one of those big arguments was that AC is inherently more dangerous. DC, it takes a much larger amount of DC current going through you to kill you. It takes a large amount of DC will stop your heart. Now, actually, your heart would often restart, uh, uh, so it doesn't necessarily kill you. In fact, that's that's uh, uh, AC, when it comes through, it 
confuses the heart. And so the heart, instead of like beating like it's supposed to, is quivering, call that fibrillating. Okay. In fact, the way you fix that is you take a big DC and go through there. So if your heart's fibrillating, a DC current there stops it. And the idea is you hope it starts back up like it's supposed to be uh, actually beating. Okay. That's what a defibrillator does. Defibrillator doesn't start a heart that's already stopped. It, it, it takes a heart that's fibrillating and stops it, hope that it starts back up like it's supposed to. All right, so, but the DC, AC argument here, why the, the, the AC? Well, the AC becomes important because of transformers. Basically, you have a power s source here. So you have some kind of power supply, okay, making AC power, spinning wires or something, and that you basically have a coil with a magnetic field uh, uh, and, and a magnetic core, and then wrapped around it is another coil. And so that means that this can go over here where you have another coil and a coil and then your, your, your load that you're using. Now, this can be very long wires in between right here. Now, why is that important? The longer the wire, the more resistance. We know that power is I squared R. So the long wires, big resistance means you're losing a lot of power. But if you transform the voltage, power is also current times voltage. So if this coil right here has more loops than that coil, that's a step up transformer. And so this voltage will be, this voltage will be higher than that voltage. If that's the case, then that means that I times V, the current will be less over here. That, that V is higher than we have I1, V1 equals I2, V2. That's for a perfect transformer, one that, that, does not have, that does not have any losses in it. That's not true for all of them, but that's, that's the ideal case you, you go for. Okay, that, that really none of them are really perfect. So, so what you do is I1, V1 equals I2, V2. Okay, so, um, if, so that means that the, this voltage higher here means smaller current. So that means that smaller current means less power is lost. And so that's the advantage of AC. You can have one power plant really far away out of town. That's providing power. You step up the voltage to very high voltage, transfer it over really long distances, drop it to a lower voltage that's more manageable to use in the home. Now, now, actually, we have multiple steps in here. We can step up to very high voltages, transfer between cities, uh, drop to lower voltage in the city uh, to, to transfer to different neighborhoods, then drop it even lower voltage uh, to go down the street, and then there drop to even lower voltage for like two or three houses. So there's multiple different transformers along the way, and, and it's done for for a variety of different reasons, but don't worry about that. But uh, that's, that's kind of how, that, that's the basic idea. That AC allows you to do one big power plant to power enormous number of homes. DC, you have to be close in order for the power plants to be useful. Otherwise, the wires are so long, you're losing a lot of electricity in the wires. So this is why AC eventually won out, it is the economy of scale, one big power plant with a handful of employees, or for DC, you would need a power plant like practically every city block and a few employees there running that one power plant. And so, so to save money for the utility, uh, for the electric company, one big power plant. So AC wins, economy of scale. Okay, uh, this was a big argument at the very beginning of the uh, uh, era of electrification between uh, Thomas uh, Edison and, and, and between uh, uh, Nikola Tesla. And so it was between these two that were arguing. Tesla thought AC would be much, much more economical. Edison thought DC safer. And so it uh, turns out that the less expensive option is what actually won. And so we use AC. Now, 
in order for this to work, for, in order for the transformer to work, you had to have changing flux. The faster it changes or the slower it changes makes a difference. If it changes too slowly from the lab that you did, you realize, oh, wait, you don't get much voltage over here. So if you get too low of a frequency, it doesn't work. Too high of a frequency, well, that's a coil. The transformer is a coil. That means it's like an inductor that resists the high frequency change. And so what you find is that if it's too high of a frequency, it also doesn't work. Okay, so, so you have to have this in-between range in there. 60 hertz works fine. You know, uh, and, and some parts of the world, they use 50 hertz, and then there are a few places that use 100 hertz. Uh, but that range in there, you know, from about... Uh, about 30 or 40 hertz up to a couple hundred hertz is the sweet spot. If you get outside of that too slow or too fast, you don't get the good transfer here. Uh, there's a couple other factors that also uh, uh, come into the economy that, again, say that 60 hertz, you know, 50 hertz, something like that, 50, 60, 70 hertz, that's the ideal uh, frequency. Get too far off of that, it doesn't work as well. So this is why we even use... AC in the first place as as opposed to DC